Third, marginal utility has nothing to do with psychology. This is very important. I want it to be quite clear, because when I was a student like you, sitting in a first-year economics class in 1973, I remember the professor came to class one day and said, today I'm going to explain to you the law of marginal utility. And do you know how he explained it? I'm going to reenact it for you exactly right now. He picked up a glass of water and said, the law of marginal utility is very simple. You're thirsty, right? Yes. Well, drink this first glass of water. Ah, was it satisfying? Good. Drink the second glass. Was it satisfying? Yes, but not as much as the first one, right? Now drink the third. Oh, well, it's a little satisfying, but not so much. Now drink the fourth, the fifth. No, I don't want any more. Now you drink the water. Now the sixth glass. Well, you can all see that utility is decreasing. Then he picked up a piece of chalk and said, this is what happens with utility. It diminishes. And everyone was convinced. And the course went on from there. Well, fiddlesticks. The law of marginal utility is not something that arises from inner mental sensations. Nor is it a law of psychology. Nor is it a law of satiety. It is a strictly praxeological law. In other words, it is part of the logic of human action, which has nothing to do with the mental sensation of satiety. It is not an empirical law, as my professor awkwardly tried to present it to me 40 years ago. It's not that I experienced that water satisfying my thirst less and less until it even disgusts me and marginal utility becomes negative. No, it is a law that is strictly part of the logic of human action. It is included in the structure of means and ends, ends being whatever they are, and means means being scarce, the actor begins by using the means to achieve the ends he values most, and then ones he values less, and therefore of the units of means at the actor's disposal, which he considers relevant in the context of his action, and fully interchangeable. Any one unit is worth what the last one on his value scale is worth to him, regardless of satiety, psychological considerations, etc., and this is a universally and apodictically valid law. It applies whenever a human being pursues ends and seeks out means to achieve them.